we're gonna learn a new word today and it's called advanced glycation end products, otherwise known as age. And what that is essentially is a sticky compound that's created by combining a protein and a fat or a fat and high levels of sugar. Basically, when you're grilling outside and you're having a barbecue grill and you have the ribs and you throw a whole bunch of sweet sauce on it, that contains a whole bunch of advanced glycation end products because you have the protein and the fat, uh, and, the fat and then you have a, the, the high levels of sugar in the sweet sauce. Or let's say you're at Dunkin' Donuts or a donut shop, which is a donut is just fried dough. So you got the fried dough, deep fried dough, and a sugar topping, and that creates advanced glycation end products. What is it? You take high levels of sugar and protein or fat, you combine them, you cook them. Now we take in these every single time we're cooking, okay? So this is one of those things that you can't be, it can't be avoided age and advanced glycation end products what that does also it speeds the aging aging process so what's created is a sticky compound hence glycation and what that does what that sticky product does it's like glue it clogs the small blood vessels so in the brain with alzheimer's and dementia you look at amyloid plaques in the heart, it's going to clog up the arteries. In the eyes, you're going to get diabetic neuropathy. Kidneys, you're going to get kidney conditions because of advanced glycation end products. And remember, that's just like a sticky compound. Advanced glycation end products, we are making these every single day because they're from, they're from the foods. Foods exposed to high temperatures, grilling, frying, Toasting, basically any time that we cook foods way too much, we are creating these compounds called advanced glycation end products. It's a sticky compound that clogs your arteries. In addition, overeating or obesity will increase your risk and advanced glycation end products can build up in the body causing oxidative stress and chronic inflammation. Remember, food is a medicine, so I'm always saying start with the diet, start with the diet, lower the sugar. Because high levels increases the vascular, the blood vessels, permeability, and increases the arterial stiffness. Because remember, when your arteries get clogged with a sticky compound, what it does, it changes the dynamics of how the arterial system is actually working and also too structured. So if your arteries are like a tube and they have Collagen fibers going either way, they're going parallel. What they're going to do, they're going to change the dexterity of the collagen fibers and so it's not as flexible. And enhances oxidative stress. But your, your, your main focus is to inhibit the age formation. Number one, cut down or cut out the sugar as much as possible. We don't need that much sugar. Sugar causes so much inflammation, diabetes, uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, a lot of stuff. So if you lower the sugar, you're going to lower the chronic inflammation. In addition, vitamin C. Vitamin C, I talked about vitamin C. Vitamin C is phenomenal for everything, not only the immune system, but also to the arterial system because vitamin C helps us produce collagen. And a thousand milligrams up to three times a day. Now, you're not going to, don't worry about taking too much vitamin C because your body's going to use what it needs and you're going to straight out the rest. Vitamin B6 in the form of P5P, that means it's already active. And you want to take 200 milligrams daily. But in addition, this is benfotamine. This is vitamin B1, but this is a fat soluble vitamin. A lot of the B vitamins are all water soluble. This is fat soluble, which actually enhances its performance. So you need to take this with food up to 600 milligrams a day. Now, once you have the numbness and tingling, this will definitely help your body repair the tissues, the nerves, so it'll help lower the numbness and tingling that's occurring. In addition, alpha, alpha lipoic acid, anywhere from 600 milligrams to 1800 milligrams a day. Now that's an amino acid, so it's best absorbed on an empty stomach. All right, so if you have any suggestions that I left out, please leave them in the comment section below because a lot of people read the comments and whatever worked for you, they definitely would be interested in hearing your benefits, hearing the supplements that you took that I didn't list, and basically your success story. So I hope you enjoyed the video. 
please leave a comment down below and I'll see you in the next one. Be good.